Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today, I wanted to cover another random installment of Introduction to Insect Identification and Taxonomy. Today, I wanted to talk about the horn-tailed wood wasps, or the Cyricidae. And these are a group of primitive wasps, which belong to the Symphyta, which is a, a paraphyletic suborder, uh, which is kind of basal to all of the wasps and bees. And these, along with a number of other families, are commonly called sawflies or horntails or wood wasps, things like that. And they are all wasps which are evolved to lay their eggs inside plant material and feed on said plant material. So there's uh, there are a number of families, but we're going to talk about a relatively small one today called the Cyricids. The general characteristic which separates the Symphyta from the other wasps and bees, also called the Apocrita, is the presence of a wasp waste or not. So with all of these basal wasps in the Symphyta, all of these sawflies and horntails and things, they have very thick wastes, so a very thick joining between the abdomen and the thorax, whereas the Apocrita have generally very, very small wastes. So uh, with most wasps and bees and ants and things like that, there's a narrow joining between the thorax and the abdomen, and with something like the sawflies, generally they have a more cylindrical body and they don't have that sort of narrow, narrow waist. So the cyricids are a relatively small family within the Symphyta. And there's uh, about 150 species worldwide, uh, separated in, into 10 genera. Here I have listed the various uh, genera and the subfamilies which you can find in the US and Canada. So North America, North of Mexico, in North America, north of Mexico, there are about 28 species in five genera, most of them within the Cyricini. The Cyricini, this first subfamily, primarily feed on conifers, and the Tremesini primarily feed on hardwood trees. These wasps can be collected fairly easily if you go into a wooded area and put out either Lindgren funnel traps or cross vein traps, and then bait them with alpha and beta pinene, alcohol, things like that, they will generally come to you. If you're going to go out and collect for these, you're not going to want to do it with a net. It would just be impossible. Um, if you are interested in collecting larvae, which are quite large and quite easy to identify, you would have to pull apart trees. This group of wasps live in trees, and I don't mean they form nests in trees. I mean they live inside the trunk of trees. And inside the trunk of trees is where they lay their eggs and the larvae hatch. And these larvae are very, very easy to identify because they're extremely cylindrical. They have little nubbin legs and they all have this horn on their tail, hence the name horn tails. So the adults lay the eggs inside trees and then they will eventually migrate out of those trees after they pupate. They generally leave these very large holes uh, after they pupate within the trunks of the trees. This is what the pupae look like. The pupae are very wasp looking. They're very easy to identify. Uh, it would be a male and a female. The females have these large ovipositors uh, and generally a very obvious horn. The males will also have a horn, although sometimes it's not so obvious. If we look at Cyrex, the genus Cyrex, as a, a an example of the Cyricity, there are a couple things that we can point out immediately. They tend to be brown or black with alternate colorations as markings. They all both males and females have these horns or cornice on their tail end, and these are their abdominal horns and where they get the name horn tails for the family. The females generally carry, or especially with Cyrex, generally carry a my, uh, mycangia or mycetangia, which is a sac inside the body where they keep fungus. And these are symbiotic fungi, which they embed the tree with when they lay their eggs. This is particularly important for Cyrex and the introduced species Cyrex noctilio, which is very damaging in pine forests. Larvae are laid within the trees. Uh, eggs hatch in the trees that are laid there. Usually uh, with something like Cyrex, it's both injected with these uh, fungi from the mycetangia or the mycangia and uh, some venom from the, from the female. Larvae take one to three years to mature. And unfortunately, because these wasps develop in wood, they are very easy to spread internationally. So there are quite a few introduced species of these. 
because of wood packing material. There's a lot of wood packing material in international trade, and a lot of it is made from pine. So something like the Cyrusini, which develop primarily in conifers, tend to be easily transported like this. Uh, generally speaking, though, they target stressed trees. So these are trees that are already unhealthy and dying. Cyrusids can grow very, very large. This is by far the largest within North America, Tremex columba. Uh, they can get up to two inches long. So very, very large for a wasp. Like I said before, most of them have a dorsal spur on the tip of the abdomen. Their tibia on the front legs will have a generally apical spurs. So these are uh, kind of the middle portion of the front legs. The pronotum tends to be wider, so you uh, tend to have this sort of flared collar-like look. I even found one reference which refers to it as a Dracula collar, this sort of flared pronotum. Uh, there generally is a this broad junction between the waist and abdomen, and they're overall fairly easy to identify. When you are trying to get a subfamily identification, however, the subfamilies can be a little more tricky to tell apart because the characters which you are most interested in tend to be associated with the wings and the legs, like uh, spurs on the legs, which can be very, very hard to see. Generally speaking, for the Cyrusini, the subfamily Cyrusini, you're going to have two apical metatibial spurs. So uh, here, these two little spurs on the legs, whereas with the Tremesini, you will only have one. And the wings, the wing cell venation tends to be different. So with the Cyrusini, you tend to have these cells right here and these cross veins present, whereas you won't have them in the Tremesini. But other than that, it takes quite a bit to tell these apart. You will frequently need a microscope, for instance, to see these apical spurs. They can be very, very small. That being said, within these two subfamilies, uh, uh, the genera can fairly easily be uh, distinguished just from looking at them. They do have some common characteristics. So for instance, within the Cyrusini, you have Cyrex and you have Uroceros. Um, and the Cyrex and the Uroceros generally have these very cylindrical bodies. They tend to be primarily black, although Cyrex will also have maybe some blue markings like you see here on the head, this metallic blue sheen on the head and thorax. You may also have uh, very obvious red legs. Sometimes they'll have uh, very obvious kind of reddish, goldenish patches on the abdomen. Whereas with your Ceres, they tend to have a lot of yellow stripes all over the body. They tend to have these yellow cheeks. They do tend to have striped legs. The antennae on the Euroceros tend to be quite thicker than what you see on the Cyrex. Generally speaking, the Cyrusini have um, more than 22 segments in their antennae, whereas with the Tremesini, they generally have fewer. So those are the only two genera within the Cyrusini. You have Cyrex and you have Euroceros. And they're not terribly different, uh, difficult to distinguish from the Tremesini. Within the Tremesini, however, it can be a little more difficult. The, uh, these uh, genera are the Aerotremex, Tremex, and Xeris. And they can be a little more difficult to distinguish. Although with Aerotremex, there's only one species within North America, Aerotremex formosanus, and this is an introduced species from Asia. So they tend to be a little more flattened instead of a hard cylinder. They tend to have more muted colors. So it's more browns and blacks instead of reds and golds and yellows and blacks. Additionally, you have something like Tremex, which I believe Tremex columba is the only Tremex species in North America. I could be wrong about that. Let me know in the comments. But uh, they tend to be very, very large and they tend to be uh, more of like a golden brown muted colors. You're not going to really confuse them. They're just so much bigger than the Cyrusids. So the Cyrex might be like an inch to an inch and a half, whereas Tremex will be up to two inches. They're very, very large, very hardy bodied. And then finally, you have Xeris, which is kind of a weird one because it does t generally look a lot more like um, the Cyrusini, although they do have this very, very long ovipositor, much longer than what you would see in the Cyrusini, as well as a very, very large horn, which also helps distinguish them from Tremex and Aerotremex, because Tremex and Aerotremex tend to have smaller horns and smaller ovipositors. So generally speaking, the, the genera aren't that hard to tell apart. If you are trying to key out species of Cyrex or species of Euroceros, for instance, there generally are quite a few species within any given area. So I will link to a PDF, which 
uh, is a key for the Cyrusids of Florida. It's a very good key, lots of pictures. And just within Florida, there are a lot of Cyrex and Eurocera species. So why would anyone care about these Cyrex wasps or these Cyrusid wasps, not just Cyrex? Although there is a very damaging species called Cyrex noctilio, which is now in North America. And these are generally considered pest species. Um, the Cyrusids in general, because they are found within uh, hardwood or softwood, and because we use so much timber for th for construction or for packaging, stuff like that, they are considered a pest. They are very damaging. Something like the Cyrex uh, wasps, like Cyrex noctilio and others, also transport an endosymbiotic fungus, and that endosymbiotic fungus does seem to have some pathogenic effects. So you do see quite a bit of damage from these wasps in pine forests, for instance. There's been a lot of damage done by Cyrex noctilio in the pine forests of Australia, New Zealand, and South Africa, and I believe Argentina. And now it's in the pine forests of upstate New York and Southern Canada, stuff like that. So they are considered a problem. If you are involved in entomology at some point, you will probably have to deal with uh, identifying some wood wasps, or especially if you're with in the realm of economic entomology. But that's all I really wanted to talk about today, and I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks.